It is National Night Out. Several members of this council have made commitments to attend. I know that some of you will as well. And I would hope that we can do this meeting as quickly as possible. Um, let's hear from the public in this order. Ms. Georgia King, Lee Cochran, and Brad Watkins. And I have three after that. Georgia King, Lee Cochran, and Brad Watkins. You each have two minutes to address the council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Georgia King. I live at 741 Adams Street, apartment 101, Memphis, Tennessee. 38105. And I'm asking the uh, City Council today uh, to establish the C Civilian Law Enforcement Review Board. It is greatly needed. Thank, Thank you, Ms. King. Mr. Lee Cochran, Brad Watkins, followed by Ralph Knowles. Yes, I'm Lee Cochran at 179 Richbriar Street. And I would like to urge the council to approve uh, to put teeth in this uh, police review board because I think it will hold bad apple policemen in you know know that they can't get away with their crimes and their fiendish sadistic behavior that some of them have and uh, you can get on Facebook and see all those people getting beat up by police officers whether you know but we appreciate our police officers if they and they're suffering if they do they follow the law and uh, there was cameras on the, the state had uh, city put cameras on the police cars and the complaints against the police officers went down more than 50% so that shows, you know, it must be a deterrent because some bad apple police officers think they can get away with all their evil, sadistic behavior. So I'd just like to, and also, you know, police, uh, any organization cannot police itself, something that's especially so, so political. So I'll just pass this uh, thing you can with, with teeth in it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cochran. Brad Watkins, Ralph Knowles, and Gertrude Moeller. Brad Watkins, 3272 uh, Southern, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. Uh, very briefly, I just we've been with this process, uh, working on this for the better part of two and a half years. With various members of the council, starting with Councilwoman Fully Love's resolution, uh, moving forward to last year, uh, where she and uh, Councilwoman Halbert sponsored a resolution which tasked us with going out and doing public input and reaching out to various shareholders nationally and locally to get information for the ordinance that's before you. Councilwoman Halbert, who I want to especially thank, has been very diligent in making sure that every piece of this was vetted, that all parties were brought to the table, and that this was handled in the most uh, broadest sense of the word transparency. And that's what we're here talking about today, transparency. This ordinance has been before the council since March. It has gone through numerous changes, but I think what you have before you is the best, strongest document we have to move forward on this issue today. So we urge members of the council to vote yes. Again, we want to thank Councilwoman Halbert uh, for her leadership and guidance and stewardship on pursuing this matter through. Please vote yes tonight and before with same night minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Ralph Knowles, Gertrude Muller, and Adrian Ward, Sr. Police business is Team taxpayer. Address for the record, I'm please. Sorry. Ralph Noyes, 3355 Poplar, Memphis, Tennessee, 38111. Police business is taxpayer business. Taxpayer business is public business. Police accountability is not inconsistent with supporting the police. In places where there are civilian review boards and uh, police cameras, complaints against police have dropped dramatically. We need to hold the police accountable. That is not inconsistent with supporting the police when they are right. But when they are not right, we need to make them right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gertrude Muller, followed by Adrian Ward, Sr. Good 
Gertrude Muller, 1882 Oliver Avenue. I want to thank the City Council for the attention they have devoted to the issue of providing transparency, accountability, and accessibility in law enforcement in the City of Memphis. I especially thank Councilwoman Wanda Halbert for her leadership in sponsoring the Civilian Law Enforcement Review Board amended ordinance and for the care she has taken to ensure that all impacted parties have had an opportunity to review the ordinance, ask questions about it, and participate in refining it and bringing it to its final form. Thank you. I also thank all those who have supported this effort but could not be here today. I respectfully request that you approve the ordinance so we can begin building a solid foundation for a trusting partnership between law enforcement and the community they serve and protect. We sorely need them to be credible in performing that duty, and that is what this ordinance will accomplish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adrian Ward, Sr. My name is Adrian Ward, Sr. I reside at 83 East Monroe, Memphis, Tennessee. Speak up just a little bit, sir. Speak I up. reside at 83 East Monroe, Memphis, Tennessee, 38109. And I'm in agreement with the Civilian Law Enforcement Review, Review Board. And I wanted you guys to, my councilmen and women, to know that I'm in agreement with it. And I hope that if it's any way possible, after modifying the ordinance, you can remodify it and try to make it a little more transparent so that we can have a better relationship with our officers as a community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ward. That ends our cards from the audience. We now will hear from members of the council. Vice Chairman Conrad, you have the floor, sir. Chairman, can me? Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since uh, we're finally around to, uh, to voting on this tonight after a long time, just want to present some information. Um, all of what we heard tonight sounds really, really good, but uh, transparency and accountability really is not what the group is after that's been uh, sponsoring this ordinance, has championed this ordinance for the last two years. Uh, I appreciate the spirit of the ordinance and all the work that Councilwoman Halbert has done on it, uh, but there's a reason that I voted for it Ever, every step of the way, uh, from the funding to the starting this whole process two years ago. Because this really isn't about CLURB. Uh, CLURB uh, done right is a good thing. We do have CLURB, and now this body has funded CLURB. Uh, but I think we can be honest with each other. Um, this whole process has really been led uh, by people that don't like the police um, and an anti-police agenda, pure and simple. And I think your vote tonight is going to send a message to the men and women uh, who serve and keep the city safe on where the city council stands. Um, first of all, I want to show the champion, if you can go back, Sean, to the screen there. This is the champion of the ordinance. Mr. Garner, I uh, certainly respect uh, his uh, opportunity to express his views, but I think it's bad policy to put a self-described professional Thanks troublemaker uh, in charge of basically writing an ordinance that this council is going to consider passing tonight. I want to go to a few slides from, again, their social media post. If you look back over this, we've got some great researchers on this council, some lawyers that I really respect. And if I, if I think if they spend any time getting past the rhetoric and the feel-good stuff we heard tonight, they'll see a lot of stuff about racist police, um, how this isn't just about a few bad apples but how they believe that we have a systemic problem within the Memphis Police Department. So if you believe that, you should vote for this ordinance. If you don't think that, if we truly just have a few bad actors, which you're going to have anytime you have thousands of employees, you should reject this ordinance. I think that elected officials uh, caving in to anti-police groups and advocates such as Mr. Garner and Mid-South Peace and Justice is one of the reasons that in the 35 biggest cities in America right now, Murder rates are up 20% this year. 
Some cities such as Houston, Baltimore, and Milwaukee have seen a 50% rise in homicides. 22 people were shot in New York City alone this past weekend because the political leadership is not standing up for police officers. I want to repeat that. In 35 of the biggest cities, murder rates are up 20% this year. Houston, Baltimore, and Milwaukee, 50% rise in homicides and 22 people shot in New York this weekend alone. So do we want the same stats here? I think a vote for this ordinance tonight will put Memphis on the same course. Why is that? Memphis police officers make rational decisions when they're confronting uh, criminals. And when they see that the citizens have stopped supporting them, the elected officials have stopped supporting them, I think they're damned if they're, they're thinking they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't on the decisions that they make. And I've heard from a lot of them over the last couple of months. And I hope, I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot, but I hope some of you have at least talked to a few rank and file police officers and heard what they really think uh, about this uh, tonight. There's some in the room, if you haven't, I encourage you to do so. I think this vote's an easy one. I think a vote against this ordinance is an easy way to send a, a message to the police department, especially right now, that we stand with them. Um, what is the premise of this ordinance? This is what the, this is what the uh, lead sponsor that's been working with Councilwoman Halbert thinks. What's your job description? Serve and protect or maintain social control through fear and violence. This is what they think. This is the presupposition of the last two years that's been work that, uh, that's supporting uh, this ordinance. They say they want to be balanced. They want transparency, but do they really? Uh, they brought a thick stack of paper of police officers and Shelby County officers that have purportedly been uh, arrested or indicted. So do you see balance here? This is why, this is, not, this, this is just a question of bad apples and not a systemic problem. You would have run out of cops out to indict by now. This is what they think. So again, if you support this, uh, this, this train of thought, then you should support uh, this ordinance. Uh, I believe that this council and this police department does support transparency. That's why we've just voted millions of dollars to put police, GPS in cars and for body cameras. And again, why we funded uh, CLURB, I think there is a lot of transparency within the Memphis Police Department. I don't see Chief Sammons here. If he was here, I think he'd tell you what he heard from hundreds of police officers Saturday night about this very ordinance and what they're gonna think if we support this group of people and this ordinance. Last but not least, I wanna look at what our police director had to say when I asked him about this ordinance and how the support of this ordinance and the people that have been promoting it, what kind of message would it send to law enforcement? And you can see what he said here. I think Mr. Gardner has clearly demonstrated his disdain for law enforcement. This will send a very negative message that will ad adversely impact not only MPD, but Memphis and public safety as well. You can't separate the messenger from the message. And this is what our police director said. If he was here right now, he would say the same thing. Uh, this has not changed in the last few weeks over the word shall or may or the legal, the legal ease that's been going around. The bottom line is support for this ordinance and the group of people that have been promoting it is a vote against public safety and against the safety of Memphians. And I think you're gonna see a dramatic increase in crime if we unwisely support this tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Halbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would first like to take a moment of personal privilege um, and then uh, present this document officially to the members of the council. Over the past seven years, I have to be honest with this council and tell you that one of my challenges has been the fact that we have no problem not only disrespecting our citizenry, but disrespecting each other. The individuals who participated in this CLUR process, which included a council representative, and I wanna thank Councilman Crone for attending one of the meetings, uh, the police di division, the police association, the city's legal team, uh, the civilian law enforcement review board, which is uh, approved by the council, and individuals from Memphis United, which they did not have a formal seat at the final table. But if there was a problem with what all of that hard work we set collectively as a body and put together, then I don't understand why any 
one who had a problem with it would wait until it is time for third and final vote to express concerns about individuals. This is not about individuals. Therefore, I am hopeful since I will be will not be returning after December to the council running for something else. Um, I am hopeful that this council, whomever sits in these seats, would respect each other enough and respect our community and our citizens enough to not do this in the future. It is embarrassing. This was a lot of hard work, and we've been in these meeting rooms for the last two, two and a half weeks. With that being said, Mr. Chair, I would like to just briefly go over the ordinance. This is a substitute ordinance. Initially, um, at second reading, the council received a document that actually was put together by an, a third party group without all of those individual vested parties at the table. And I just also find it a little ironic that when former council member Shea Flynn put this item on the table, nobody said anything. I mean, it just was rolling. We literally got to the table to vote and realized that there were a lot of things in there that couldn't be in there. But we put this document together and each of you should have received a red line item because now what this body has diligently done, we've taken the current ordinance as it is written in the books today and we've strengthened it. We strengthen it with issues such as instead of allowing the internal affairs process to linger for a year or more, we've reduced that down to 45 days when CLERB can get involved. Imagine being a citizen, you have a formal complaint, and because someone may have a buddy in the police department or they may be trying to protect someone or a police officer is being misrepresented, I've literally seen police officers demoted for an entire year for something they did not do. And those who brought the charges against them knew they didn't do anything. And they had to wait a year. So this now reduces that process for CLERB to get involved to 45 days. One of the other sticking points was the subpoena authority. Only members of the Memphis City Council has subpoena authority. CLERB, through its council liaison, which will be assigned, will receive a, a resolution upon uh, findings and invest, fact finding and investigations. They would make a recommendation to the city council, present their facts, and ask them to issue a subpoena. Whether or not that ever happens, who knows? Hopefully this process will be strong enough that we never even have to find ourselves moving in that direction. There is one change, Mr. Chair, and I am open to questions from any of my colleagues. On page seven of seven, um, there is the, the numbering, the lettering is off. You have A, B, C, and the next should be D and E. And I wanna thank Attorney Godwin for bringing this to our attention because it was a clear, just um, actually word oversight. You should be, it should be A, B, C, and then you have a graph, and, and we're going to D and E, and on item number D, on item D rather, the last sentence should be taken off of the, 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 the item because that's a, addressed in A, B, and C. We have a clean copy. We have a clean copy, and that sentence will read, the board on its own complaint will investigate cases involving use of deadly force and incidents resulting in the death or injury of persons in police custody. And that would be the end of that section. The other portion of it is addressed in the bullets above. So with that being said, Mr. Chair, I am very proud of the work that this collective body has done together. It was not easy. And when I tell you when it was a shock for me to discover that they had never been brought together, that was the best moment of this work. I appreciate the work. We all agree. CLERB is recommending and making this, mo this recommendation to support um, this civilian law enforcement review process. And I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Albert. Um, any other council member desiring to speak? Mr. Reed has given his time to... All right. Any other? All right. 
I'm seeing lights come on now. One second. By the way, I did receive one more card from the audience. We've already heard from the audience, so I'm not recognizing the individual who came in late. Um, we're moving now with the council. Ms. Fully love you at the floor. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. And I certainly would like to thank Councilwoman Halbert and her leadership. I began and she took the ball. Well, she took the baton and went across the wind line. I hope so. But I have one question that <clears throat> I've had uh, several police officers ask me this particular question, uh, Councilwoman, and, and I know that you can answer it, even though we know that Pastor Ralph White, uh, David AC, and certainly others that have been appointed on that board will be very fair. But there some police officers are saying that I guess because of what they have heard and have observed, that will they be treated with respect and fairness when it comes to that process. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Fully Love. Absolutely. Um, CLERB will be expected to adhere to all of the ethics requirements as any other elected or appointed bodies in the city of Memphis. If anyone feels this organization has um, created a problem or done something untoward or even wrongfully um, investigated a matter, then they have the right to bring charges before the Ethics Commission against members of CLERB. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berlin Boyd, you have the floor. No board, sir. I'm sorry. It's... He wants to be me tonight. Wait a minute. This says B. Boyd. Mr. Bro, you I promise you I didn't push it. All right, Mr. Mr. Okay, forgive me. My screen is telling me one thing, but it's saying something else. Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was leaning towards uh, voting for this, uh, particularly since they removed the uh, authority for uh, the this board to uh, have the subpoena power, uh, and then I see this. Uh, was that a copy of a email uh, up there, Tony Arm, Director Armstrong? Yeah. Councilman uh, Conrad. Yes, that was a uh, response from an email by the director of the Memphis Police Department in direct response to a simple question, which is, will passing this ordinance promoted by this group of people make Memphis more or less safe and improve or decrease employee morale. And he was very clear in white and black. He said it will decrease public safety and it will have an adverse impact on the Memphis Police Department. That's from our director of police. I talked to him today and he stands by what he said. It has nothing to do with the legalistic terms that have been exchanged over the past couple weeks. You cannot separate the message from the messenger and every police officer knows what this group stands for. One more point I, I wanna make. Excuse me, there will be no shouting out in here. They, Sergeant at Arms, if you see somebody, please remove them. They can't follow the rules because they're lawbreakers at heart that do not like the law. Mr. Okay? Mr. Conrad, now, Mr. Conrad, you're out of line on that, please. Mr. Boyd, one more thing. And you can go, again, we got some great researchers here. If you review what they really think and review what they say on social media, there's a lot of things about the unfortunate shooting that we had a couple of weeks ago. But radio silent. Not one thing, not one word of support for Officer Bolton. And that silence speaks volumes. Please do not vote for this. All right. Thank you, everyone. Mr. 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 You still have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone representing the Memphis Police Department here today in the higher ranks? I know Director Armstrong is obviously very busy today. I sure would like to hear from him or his representative. Mr. Boyd, Sorry, they were here at the last meeting. They knew this was being done this meeting. Wait a minute, Ms. Albert. Wait one minute. Right, Mr. Nothing. Boyd, would you like to continue? Unless uh, someone from the administration would like to speak for Director All right. Armstrong. No one is here for that. All right. Um, Mr. Conrad, you hit your light. Are you out of the queue? 
Excuse me, excuse me, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. Sergeant at arms, please show her the door. Thank you. Ms. Halbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. She can come back in in 15 minutes, Sergeant at arms, but right now she's out. 15 minute timeout. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do want to let Councilman Boyd know that while I understand um, there may be some individuals uh, who are in this room or even outside of this room that some may or may not like, that has absolutely nothing to do with the work that was done at that table. I'd like to ask every member of that group, would you please stand who's in the audience? We have representation from the police department. Director, I mean, police director Armstrong was there. Representing police was Zaid uh, Salim, attorney Zaid Salim. Representing police association was uh, attorney Godwin. And I can't see who else is back there, but we had several representatives from the police association. We had um, legal, we had Ms. Maya Siggers. We had the Civilian Law Enforcement Review Board, which a lot of the um, representatives who are appointed to that boy are in the office, in the audience. And we did have Memphis of Memphis, U Memphis United, and they were far more than just one person that you saw talked about on this screen. And again, there are people in this audience who don't like all of us, but that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that we are the elected body of the city of Memphis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, Mr. Crone, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I agree with, with uh, Councilwoman Halbert in the sense that uh, during that meeting, I think everybody had their say. And uh, I think the one person who had, who spoke for quite a while and quite eloquently on the subject was, was Mayor Wharton. And Mayor Wharton uh, was voice support for this particular draft as it sits now. And um, I don't know uh, what anybody else's position in the administration was, but he certainly supports it. I think that if your aim for supporting this is to undermine the police department, then you've, you've utterly failed. If that was anybody's aim at any time, that's been a failure because this ordinance does not undermine the police department. In my opinion, it strengthens the police officers because none of us enjoy having uh, our actions second-guessed and Monday morning quarterbacked in the calm, calculated uh, environment of a courtroom or uh, a, a, a hearing room. But having said that, sometimes that's the most powerful place to be if you're an innocent person charged with something where it can be adjudicated uh, on the record and in public. And I think one of the problems now for officers is that they are accused of something and it goes kind of into a black hole. And when they are exonerated, because they're exonerated by the department, there's this notion that it's been swept under the rug and that they really haven't been exonerated at all, they've just been protected. And the one benefit that you get from a, a civilian uh, law enforcement review board is you do get that independent look at something. And the fact of the matter is, whether we vote this up or down, tomorrow morning the sun will rise and CLRB will, will be there. We're not, we're not uh, uh, instituting something uh, new. Basically, we, we and we've already voted uh, to fund positions for that, for, for CLRB. So I think when you read over this, what it really does is it tightens up some, uh, it tightens up some things, it clarifies some issues, but it really doesn't change the overall uh, power of CLRB. It doesn't really change the scope necessarily of what CLRB can look at but it does provide some timelines and some deadlines to give clarity to everyone on what the rules are. And uh, therefore, after, uh, uh, after a lot of soul searching, I'm gonna support it.
because I think it, it's the product. That's one reason I went to that meeting, and uh, Councilwoman uh, Halbert did a great job of getting everyone in the room and finding consensus and common ground. This isn't any one entity's proposal. This is the, the product of the police uh, department, the association, the police association, community advocates, uh, the members of the, the board themselves, and other interested parties. So I don't think it's one-sided. In fact, I think it's probably uh, very, very well balanced and uh, gives us a chance to see how it goes. And this body can always come back and, and readjust if it, it needs to be. The, the members of this, uh, how the people are appointed onto this board is going to remain the same as it was yesterday. And the, the, the staff is going to be a, is going to be hired the same way that they were yesterday. And the idea that this can be an avenue to, to bash the police department, um, I, I would just respectfully submit, I don't think, if that was anybody's goal, they failed at that goal because it is not going to be the case if this passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, a member of the council, point of information? Yes, Mr. Boyd. To the, to the person that had the floor. Councilman Carl. Uh, you asked for a point of information? Yes, to the to speaker. The, to the speaker. The person is speaking. All right, Councilman briefly, Crone. briefly. Councilman Crone, briefly. Yes, hold on, let me get uh, his mic back. Go ahead, sir. So you attended a meeting of, of the group that was planning this uh, ordinance that we're looking at? Yes, sir. Okay, is that one meeting? That was the meeting uh, earlier. Just one meeting? Just one, this past the last meeting, yes, sir. Did you say the police uh, hierarchy had representatives in that meeting? I, I believe that, I, the answer is yes, I believe that the Director Armstrong was there. Okay, now what did they, he or they have to say about? Well, they, they, we went around or I really didn't participate. I was more of an observer than a participant, but I listened, and there was lots of back and forth between um, all the parties, including the mayor and uh, Chief Sammons, as well as uh, the representatives of the department who were there, along with the, the police association, uh, the uh, Peace and Justice Coalition, uh, on various kinds of issues and, and, you know, the wording. And when we left, it, you know, uh, it looked to me that everybody supported the ordinance that was on the table at the time, which is the ordinance that's, that's right here. All right. At this point, Mr. Chrome, you've used up your time. Um, we granted you that privilege there. Thank you. Um, some people are getting in and out of the queue. Um, Mr. Berlin Boyd, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can I get uh, Director Armstrong to please come down, please? First of all, thank you, sir. First, 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 let me start off by saying, uh, Director, thank you for what you do and thank you for what you've done and the leadership that you have shown in this time of bereavement for our entire city. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions and it segues into what as a city we're dealing with right now with the loss of Officer Sean Bolton. Um, how do you feel currently about the ordinance as a whole? I would just ask that respectfully with everything that we faced and everything that these officers have faced this week that we follow back and forth if we could table this until after the funeral, respectfully, in honor of this officer, Officer Sean Bolton, uh, I just don't think this is appropriate at this time for us to be discussing police oversight in light of everything that we've went through this week. All right, let's. I'll take make a motion um, for delay to until after the funeral.
There's a motion made to table this until let's do first meeting in, in November. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm hearing members of the council hollering out. Hold on. Mr. Boyd has the floor. Mr. Boyd. Let's make a motion to hold this item until after the burial of Sean Bolton. And we'll do it in the first meeting of November. Second. There's a motion and second on the floor to hold this until the first meeting in November. All right, let's clear the let's clear the, the screen because we're going to speak to this motion. Ms. Halbert, you want to speak to this motion, correct? Yes, I do. You have the floor. When are the services, sir? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. When are the services, sir? This Thursday. This Thursday today yes, is Thursday, eleven o'clock. Tuesday? Yes, ma'am. What does November have to do with Thursday? Excuse me, audience. Mr. Chair, you know, it's really, and Director, I, you know, I respect you. And I have absolutely, I mean, I wasn't expecting that. And I have absolutely no problems with holding this item until afterwards. I'm really disturbed at what I'm seeing from my colleagues because clearly something else is going on here. And Mr. Chair, I have the floor. I would like to ask the council members to allow us to come back in two weeks and finalize this issue. Um, so I ask you to vote the item down unless I need to make a Well, you, you, you have two, two options. One, you can make an amendment for two weeks, or two, you can ask that it be voted down. I'd like to ask, uh, make an amendment for two weeks, Mr. Chair. If I could get a second, please. Thank There's you. amendment and second that this come back in two weeks. We are now speaking to that item. Anyone from the council caring to speak? on a delay of two weeks. Seeing none, let's put up the screen. Special vote. This is a motion to delay for two weeks. Please cast your votes. Has everyone voted? Let's see the vote. Berlin Boyd, no. William Boyd, no. Brown, yes. Collins, yes. Conrad, no. Crone, yes. Ford, no. Fully Love, yes. Halbert, yes. Hedgepeth, no. Morrison, no. Strickland, yes. Chairman Lowry, no. As I count the votes, seven no's, it fails. We are back to the main motion. Would anyone like to speak again back to the main motion? Uh, Mr. Boyd, you have utilized your time. Is someone giving Mr. Boyd? Mr. Morrison is giving him more time. Thank you, sir. All right, go ahead, sir. The only Please thing put I'm, five minutes up on the screen. The only thing I'm going to say, I'm going to keep it real brief. I'm just saying we lost this officer, and we should give the family respect. Let them grieve. I mean, if you, if you come through a process that's traumatic as that, allow the family opportunity to grieve. If we're going to vote for this club item today, I think our votes will remain the same when we bring it back up. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Anyone else? Ms. Halbert, you've utilized your time. Is someone else giving Ms. Halbert additional time? Ms. Fully Love, you only have about a minute. Ms. Halbert, go ahead. I would like to ask the maker of the motion if we could wait until the first meeting in September, Mr. Chair. Okay, now, I, I did, I just no, wait, 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 wait a minute, Ms. Ms. Halbert, that motion failed. No, if you, no, that was a different motion, Mr. Chair. September, so, the first meeting in September. Oh, I'm sorry, we can do the second, the second week, I'm sorry. I apologize. You're making a new motion. Second week in September, unless, I think another council member was... Just okay, the motion is to hold this until the second week in September. Is there a second? Council members. Is there a second? No. 
Hearing none, we do not have that on the floor. All right. Anyone else regard? I was out of the queue. Well, you, you were out of the queue. I didn't see your name. Yeah, it was right. Okay. Out of respect. Hold on, Mr. Ford. You have the floor. I was just going to make the motion instead of the second meeting in September, the first meeting, which is September 1, which has not been on the floor. For when this comes back. September 1 was on the floor? Two weeks is August 18th. So I'd like to make the motion for September 1 for this to come back, uh, Mr. Lowry. Is there a second? There is a second that this come back. September, September 1, that's the September first, first meeting in September. All right. Anyone want to speak to that motion? Set the screen up, please. Trying to find a middle ground. If it fails, I'll go from over. Yes. While we're waiting for the screen to set up, I usually reserve my comments for, for debate, but Mr. Boyd just said something that people's attitudes and minds up here probably won't change, and I'm tending to agree with that. This has been delayed so many times, I think that we've done a disservice to everyone who's played a role in this process to delay it again. But the vote is coming. Is the screen set up, please? This is a vote to delay until September 1st. everyone let's see it Berlin Boyd no William Boyd no Brown yes Collins yes Conrad no Crone no Ford yes Fully Love no Halbert yes Hedgepeth no Morrison no Strickland no Chairman Lowry no the motion to delay fails we're back to the main motion Please, get, please set up the screen for the main motion. It's been moved by Mr. Ford that we move forward. We've heard from everyone on the council. Now, two people just got in the queue after Mr. Ford moved for the main motion. That's fine, Mr. Boyd. Thank you. No, he just said no. Ms. Halbert, again, the move has been made for the main motion that we vote on this now. Please set the screen. This is for the main motion on clerk. Cast your votes. Main motion. Yes. Okay, hold on. Ho hold on. Wait a minute. I've been asked for a point of order. Someone said this is to delay to November. I had thought that it failed. Am I incorrect? Forgive me. Forgive me. The amendments failed. Main motion. To delay this until November is on the floor. You've cleared the screen. Thank you. Will we delay this till November? Cast your votes. Has everyone voted? Berlin Boyd, yes. William Boyd, yes. Brown, yes. Collins, no. Conrad, yes. Crone, no. Ford, yes. Fully Love, no. Halbert, no. Hedgepeth, yes. Morrison, yes. Strickland, no. Chairman Lowry, no. The delays have it. This item will be held until November. As we move on now to the next item, number 23, please. Item number 23 is an ordinance to redistrict all council districts and to assign.